Hi folks, welcome to my Hippit Retro Journal. Um, today uh, we're going to do some artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, I have this book by Tim Hartnell which is um, called Exploring Artificial Intelligence on the Sinclair QL. Tim Hartnell was actually a famous author in the 80s. Um, he also did one uh, called uh, the QL Handbook for the for the QL, but um, yeah, the QL handbook. Uh, I, I mean, I have a few of his books. I have a giant book of computer games, which is just general, um, uh, you know, non specific to a computer. Uh, and uh, I even recently bought, uh, because of the ZX simulator, I bought this book 51 games. Game programs for the time of Sinclair 1000 and 1500. Um, I actually had this as a, a, a when I was younger, but uh, uh, yeah, it just got lost, so I bought a new one. There's, there's a bunch of these on eBay, so they're pretty easy to get. Um, but um, with regard to AI, um, I also have uh, the one of the more well-known texts by uh, Stuart Russell and Peter Norwood, uh, and uh, I will say that um, uh, this is this tends to be more like a text than it does uh, his other books that are just filled with programs. Um, so this does have programs in there uh, to type in, uh, but it really goes into sort of the details of machine learning and uh, and other things. Um, if I go and sort of leave through this, you can see that uh, some of the so there's a, sec a section on uh, learning, called thinking, searching, which is important in AI. Uh, again, let's try to make sure it's focused. Uh, um, talking, and it's really more of uh, natural language processing. And that's sort of my field of, of, of um, uh, one, one of the fields that I'm, uh, let's make sure that this is focused, um, that I work in, uh, and then helping is uh, on expert systems uh, and that's about it um, and so uh, yeah I'm going to be uh, looking a little bit on, on the under the natural language processing section uh, with regard to uh, oops. Oh, unfortunately I'm trying not to break the spine here but I want to make sure that you guys can see um, yeah so uh, there's a there's actually a cool little program in here uh, called uh, machine translation and that's the one that I want to play with today. Uh, I do research in uh, uh, speech recognition and so natural language processing uh, is part of that and so is machine translation. Uh, let me say first a few things about AI. It's always a misunderstood field. I think back in the um, 60s uh, there was these grand uh, um, ideas that uh, AI would sort of uh, really progressed to the point where we would actually have this idea of, of, a, of an artificial intelligence. But I think um, it's kind of settled down into being a, a, a field with practical uh, uh, applications uh, that makes life easier. Expert systems are one case, uh, or these complex systems like self-driving cars, but, but self-awareness uh, is not something that we're close to uh, discovering um, I think the uh, you know certainly the um, fiction has taken a hold of artificial intelligence and has really done a nice job and in TV shows like Star Trek and uh, uh, Alistair Galactica etc of uh, you know these self-sentient robots I think the, the the real problem is that you know this term artificial intelligence was coined uh, before we really knew what what to expect um, and, and I know even famous folks like Ray Kurzweil has, has made uh, uh, predictions about where it will be in, in 10 or 20 years, and this was probably 10 or 20 years ago. And we've never gotten there because, you know, we're not, you know, we, we don't even understand human intelligence and, and self-awareness. So we can't do this on a machine. Um, you know, if, if you look at um, biology, for instance, I mean, here we're in a pandemic and and a virus is shutting down the world, so we, we, we are not very, we're so far away from understanding, the, you know, the, the human condition and the, and, and the human body that we, how can we recreate it 
so this is not something that's going to happen, uh, uh, likely not in our lifetime. Um, uh, and uh, but it's fun to work with, right? And so, uh, so I do. I work in speech recognition, and um, uh, you know, we we've learned a lot on how to how to have a computer uh, process to understand speech, but it's uh, it's based on mathematics and probabilities, um, uh, not on. And you know, some artificial neural network uh, have been incorporated, but even that is is a mathematical model that's just waiting uh, inputs to figure out um, what uh, you know what what to decide on. And I'm not saying that that's not how the human brain works at the micro level, but there's more to it than that. As I said, we, we you know it's, it, it, we haven't we, we can't we can't eradicate a virus quickly uh, because we have you know. We have a lot of knowledge, but compared to what the knowledge we need to have, it's it's minimal. So that, that's what I'll, I'll stick with that with regard to uh, preaching about AI. But you know, I make this point because I just saw a video by by the Eight Bit Guy, who's one of my favorite YouTubers, and uh, he um, got, got himself in trouble, I guess, back about three years ago. He made the video, and he sort of um, kind of conflated science fiction with fiction and. A lot of people kind of uh, called him on that, um, you know, and he, he and he had a lot of good things in his video, but you know, making proclamations about uh, in 20 years or, or or something like that, or in the near future, um, is dangerous. So, AI is a tool. I think um, simulated intelligence might be better than artificial intelligence. It's just not as sexy a term. And again, the word intelligence, you know, <clears throat> uh, it sort of implies sentience, and it's it's. It's not right. It's really we're creating these systems that artificially mimic uh, human behavior, uh, not coming close to creating self-awareness. <clears throat> but let's talk about this book. Yeah, I really like this book. Not it goes into the details of uh, uh, how machine learning works, and there's I think there's an example in here that that talks about how you can replicate um, a machine learning learning algorithm by hand by using uh, match boxes and putting matches in there, and then following a, a set of steps where you take a match and put it into another match box and that, that kind of tells you how weighting works so that's so, so it's really good fundamentally and, and it's not like you know the, he kind of on each section has a program that he explains and, and creates and expands upon so that's kind of cool and so the one of the programs i want to do today is um uh it's a simple program and i've never really thought much of it because i haven't done work in this area but um I've done checkers and that kind of stuff, but this is a translate program uh, that basically uh, translates. Uh, you can see the example. He's got one from uh, English to uh, what he calls uh, Fenglish, French with some English. So basically, if it doesn't understand a word, it just puts the uh, the um, uh, English word in its place. Uh, and it's a very simple algorithm. I mean, it's a few pages to type in and. Uh, And I'm going to type it in, and then we're going to work on it. And then we'll see if we can uh, um, modify it. Uh, I, I, what I want to do is make it uh, be able to read this in from a file as opposed to a data statement. This is nice and fast, and the file read is going to be slow, and that's why they didn't do it. But we have an SD card, so um, although my SD card reader isn't uh, that much faster than an actual microdrive, but then I want to see if I can put German in here instead of uh, um, French. Uh, and then we're going to compare it to Google Translate to see how well it does, right? So, computer uh, from the uh, 1980s um, uh, going up against the uh, uh, Google, almighty Google. So, I think that'll be fine. So, um, we're going to use a computer today. I'm going to try something different, um, which is I'm going to try uh, to not uh, do a screen uh, share because that never works well. I'm actually going to try to hook my computer uh, straight up. Uh, the camera's put it straight in front of the computer to see if that works better. Uh, so we'll see uh, because I want to be able to use my, my video capture, uh, my TV card, and uh, the video capture doesn't capture it, but I can do it on the camera. So here we go. Let's give that a try. So I've got the uh, picture, I think, pretty well. Uh, um, it's the contrast I think is fine and I'll have to make sure to keep an eye on that but yeah so let me boot this up and see if that changed anything no nope. all right so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in the program uh, so let's do that the nice thing about super basic is you don't actually have to uh, you can take some shortcuts so this will finish up 10 remark uh, 
Looks like Tim Hartnell also used some, uh, um, oops, uh, you, you know, spacing to make the program more readable. Interesting that it says initialize with an S as opposed to the American way of doing it. And this is the main loop because it says repeat main loop. And uh, here's where we grab the um, input to translate into uh, uh, our language of choice. In this case, it's going to be French. He calls it Franglish uh, because if it doesn't find the word at once, it uh, substitutes it. It just puts the English word in, in its place. All right, so let me just continue this and uh, you know, fast forward to the end, and then we'll move on. And we are done. So this did take a little bit to get right. I did try to run it a few times and had some bugs in it, but I have debugged it since. But this is it. So let me save this first before um, I lose it. So I'm going to call MVV3 translate one because I'm going to create a. The plan is to create a second one uh, that isn't uh, French. Make sure that I have it. Uh, before I run it, I'm going to actually then move this uh, to the other machine. And I can do that just by simply plugging this. Uh, hold on, it's, my red light is still on on my, uh, there it is, on my SD card microdrive emulator D drive. Awesome tool. The person that, just, that created that just created a, a replacement uh, power uh, supply for the QL, which I'm going to get because that's also very nice to have. All right, so it's under temp. Just going to copy AI into here. And then uh, there are tools that uh, can be used. I'm going to just uh, I'll leave this in here for now. Um, that uh, command prompt, uh, you can go CD. Um, so the tool, uh, first I want to change the directories to desktop AI. And the tool is in program files. Sinclair Utilities QLAT uh, and uh, has all these options, but you can actually um, <clears throat> uh, grab the contents of uh, what's in the directory uh, from that. So let me do that. And uh, sometimes it doesn't work right away, so I might have to tinker with this. Uh, we're going to say, uh, the option is write all files in MDV to current directory dash w. And the file, is, uh, uh, the file would be AI, AI MDV. Oh yeah, so again, so sometimes you get this problem, but uh, I do have a workaround, so let me do this again. Okay, so that did the trick. So I finally got it. So here it is, translate one bass. Um, and so um, I'm going to have to convert this to uh, DOS because the QL uses Unix formats. Ironically, it's a very Unix-like. Uh, so if I open this up in Notepad, uh, here is my program. Um, ta -da! Yeah, in all its glory. Uh, if I do uh, word wrap, you'll see that these are all the words that... Uh, so these, uh, I don't know how many words it has, but I think it's, um, well, they, they had a maximum of 100. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's a pretty tidy program. So this, the, the main logic here is, so this is for reading it in. So the main logic is under, this uppercase is it. So this is the main logic right here that actually does the translate. So it's pretty simple. Um, um, I'll leave it up. Uh, so what I'll do is, uh, if you want to copy this uh, format, word wrap. Uh, I'll leave this here, uh, take a screenshot, and then I'll move it up one page, uh, and I'll highlight data because I'll move that up at the end, take a screenshot, and then finally the rest of it. Oh, I guess the data does take more than So uh, take a screenshot, and then I'll, I'll highlight uh, six, this one. And I move it up, and this should be the final page. Yeah, so it's not it's not too long, but it, you know, it's lots of typing. 
these are comma separated lists of English and French words. Okay, so that's uh, what we have presently. So um, let me um, actually now let me actually run it on this just to show what we've got. All right, so we're going to say run and uh, it initializes itself. And so then we can type in some uh, some some phrases. Um, how are you? Oops, and so I misspelled you, so how est you, yeah, so uh, what is your name? Uh, quelle est votre nom? Oh, so that's that's pretty good. So let's um, let's go and open up. Uh, I do already have Google Translate opened up. Uh, and so let's do German to, I mean, uh, not German, I was playing with German, but let's do it to French. And type in uh, what did I had in here? I had uh, how, what is your name? So let's type that in here. What is your name? Quest est book no. So well, so pretty close. Quell, yeah, that's not bad. Uh, I don't really speak French very well, but we can try other phrases. Uh, my. Oh. Typing, typing on the wrong thing, sorry. Uh, let's go. Um, my dog, dog is big. Does it have any of that stuff in? Man Chien S. Grand. Okay, good. <laughs> let's try that. My dog is big. Man Chien S. Gross. Gross instead of uh, grand. Okay. Uh, but I but I bet if you go uh, French to English and you type in Mon Chien Mon Chien S. Grand, that says the right thing. So <clears throat> pretty cool. Um, uh, how much does this cost? Oops, uh, French to uh, English. Uh, sorry. Um, English to French, right? So then we can go. Uh, so how much does this cost? How much? How much does this? These are, I assume, it's sort of phrases that. Uh, uh, so it doesn't have how. It doesn't have much. Does. Uh, it doesn't have any. <laughs> So it's a limited vocabulary, unfortunately. Um, where do you live? I, I shouldn't have changed uh, focus. Live. And then, uh, where do both live? Yeah. So again, you get a limited vocabulary because it, uh, it, it only has the words in it that are uh, uh, in here, so um, can I order a beer? Can you order bin beer? My house is cold. Mon mansion is cold, so it doesn't have cold in there. <clears throat> Again, so these are the words that it can recognize. Um, so, um, uh, but the ones where it does have it, it does pretty good. Um, I don't know, unfortunately, um, French enough to come up with more complex. Uh, th th this is going to do better, obviously, when it, when it, when it has more of a, a localized or co colloquialism, colloquialism in languages. Anyway, I, I know German, so I wanted to do German. So the next thing I wanted to do here is to... Um, take uh, 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 change this uh, to turn it into um, uh, to be able to read German and I'm actually going to do this on here and then translate it back over um, I found uh, the other thing I did is that I found uh, um, a list of a thousand words so what I want to do is take that list and turn it into a file that I can read in so let me do that and then we'll compare it to German and that, since I know German I can do a little better job on on um, the language so what I want to do is take this and uh, change it. So uh, I'm going to start off with that, and I'm going to basically get rid of all these remark statements. Uh, and uh, 
500, 500, um, oh, I think I forgot to type in that final, uh, <laughs> uh, that doesn't matter, I, I got tired of typing. He actually had a remark at the end, of line 700, that said, uh, rem remark in translate. I didn't put that in, but that's okay. So, uh, yeah, let me change, uh, so I'm going to change this, uh, define, uh, this initialized procedure. Um, so 425, I'm going to add in 425, um, keyboard's a little better here, but it doesn't give you the print, uh, zero, uh, I think, uh, so this is the window zero, I want to print in, enter size, so, uh, because now I'm going to be reading in from a file, and then input, and they've been using the count variable, so I'm just going to continue to use count. So uh, count. Uh, so this time I'm going to resize these by count and not by size. The first one is how many words you have. The second one is how big the words can be. So we'll keep the words at 15. I don't think you need more than that. And then 445, instead of restoring, I'm going to actually ask for a file name. Number zero, uh, enter. Uh, uh, file name, no, so just file name, keep it simple and short, uh, and then input number zero uh, name, and then we're going to right away open, uh, open uh, number th uh, channel three, uh, that's going to be tied to that name, All right, channels one, two, zero, one, and two are already open, uh, they're, uh, uh, and anyway, so, you know, having done Python in the last video, I kind of find it interesting that, uh, yeah, this isn't actually so bad to uh, write some uh, um, to write some code. Uh, uh, it's pretty convenient. So, uh, so this is gone. So 450. So I'm going to change 455. Uh, that should actually be. Uh, I'll make that 450. Make that 450 to get rid of that one. Um, and then 455, we're going to, uh, <clears throat> we are going to have a for loop in here. Uh, no, we're gonna print, uh, let's do print loading. I kind of spec this out on, on my notes a little bit, um, as I always do when I code. Um, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna print a loading message and then 460, we're gonna replace with, uh, uh, for, uh, let's see, H, I don't think has been used in this, so for H uh, equals 1 to count, um, and then we're going to um, uh, 465, uh, we're going to um, input a line from uh, our, and what we're going to have is we're going to have a comma separated uh, list of words. Uh, if you saw this, it was it was German followed by uh, it was German followed by uh, English. So um, and so I'm going to do that. So input line three, and then um, I'm actually going to have to figure out where the uh, comma is. So 470. So this is going to be kind of an odd thing. Uh, and this is sort of my lack of knowledge of super basic. There might be a function in here. I couldn't find it. So for i equals one to uh, uh, len uh, line, uh, if line dollar i is equal to a comma, then, um, then, uh, I just want to get out of this, uh, go to, uh, the next line. And just skip out of this, all right? Um, I don't know if I can do say exit i, but let's. Uh, I know this will work. Uh, I know that you have exits for um, loop counter, so I might be able to say exit i. Uh, let me let me put it this way, so it runs, and I can always try exit i later. Uh, and uh, then I want to um, 470. So that's 470. Get rid of that. Uh, 475, I'm going to, um, 
actually this is uh, the same it shouldn't be indented so then uh, the next one is going to be um, a dollar equals um, line one two i minus um, yeah one two i minus one so um and then i'm going to call uppercase which takes i and uh uppercase it but what it also does interesting enough is it adds spaces before and after so then the first one is my foreign language so then for f of h is going to equal b of um so from two to uh len of b which is the uppercase of uh, uh minus one so this is going to get rid of the space but so uppercase basically takes a and creates a b string you can see this here um uh, it ends up uh, giving you a b string but it actually puts spaces before and after so I have to account for those and so that's what this is doing um so i'm uh f becomes the uppercase version but i'm going from two to one less so that i don't uh and then um uh, 480 is going to be very similar to that. 480 is going to be a dollar equal, uh, equals line, and this time it's going to go i plus 1 uh, to uh, length of line. Uh, and then we're going to call it uppercase. And then um, we're going to say e. Uh, the English uh, name. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm customizing it to uh, the the list that I found. Uh, so it's going to require um, the, the, the foreign word uh, followed by the um, um, the English uh, equivalent. So again, this is the same as the other one. So we're skipping over the blank spaces. 480, um, and then 485. Uh, is just the uh, next h which is uh instead of having a repeat loop you can just say next h and i think that's it uh so we've added that and let's save this as translate to uh in ai so i think this uh it always does, yeah, it adds a text thing to it. Um, but let's, um, let's close this up. Uh, okay, I won't. let's just close this up. Change the exten extension. Now we can. Fine with that. And now if I open it up, uh, I should still read. And I think uh, just to go back through this print size, dim count file name i don't think how many errors in there for h uh, oh i guess i don't have to indent this this is part of that so that's kind of silly so that's indented for the for loop there's a for loop to input uh i equals one to length if line is that then go to 475 um that should do it uh line one to uppercase two to length a equals line one yeah in english is two to length minus one next age and everything else should still work because uh, i this relies on count so i'm just changed count to a thousand so yeah so before we uh, move on and uh, copy this uh save yeah i, I copy this back into um so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new AI. And the way I have to do this is I have to create another file. Um, new text document. I'm going, to, I'm going to call it list.txt. And in here I just have to add the file name. So it's going to be translate1 bass, translate2 bass. And I need a word list now. So I'm going to call it words text. So I have to create that as well. So these are the three uh, files that are going to make up my new um, or translate to that bass, sorry. Okay, so then we just have to create the word list. So let's do that. And I'm going to do this just in Notepad. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this whole list. And 
and uh, copy this whole list. And uh, here we go. Okay, and I'm gonna just paste it into um, paste that into here. And so now I just need to uh, remove some of the um, uh, extraneous stuff. So this there's a space and a tab here and a bunch of numbers. I do this since I do speech research and I have to manipulate many occasions lots of text files. I, I kind of know how to do this pretty quickly. So I'm just going to go and replace all ones in the space, twos in the space, threes in the space, fours in the space, fives in the space, six in the space, seven in the space, eight in the space, nine in the space, zero in the space. Now I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. I usually do this in a Perl script in Unix, but since I'm on Windows, I've, I've done this when I didn't have access to the, uh, an environment that makes it more conducive. And now I think there's just a tab here. Replace, and then I can replace the uh, space with a comma. And then finally, I need to get rid of these umlauts. So there's three characters. So usually this is re this is replaced by UE, and there should be just a umlaut, not a space. Uh, and there's a sharp S, which usually we substitute by. QL doesn't um, necessarily have the same mappings for those, and there should be a, an a, an E, which is OE. And then there should be an A here somewhere. So I'm just going to find the A umlaut. Uh, for my search and replace, there it is. And that should take care of all of the special characters. Um, and replace. And so now we can literally uh, save this. Save as uh, words dot uh, underscore text. I should have actually called it dot text because, um, oh, I, I forgot. I think one more thing is, yeah, make sure there's a blank space in there, otherwise it's not going to work. Save, uh, and then so I have to replace this with, uh, get rid of the text. And then we want to convert all these into um, Unix, and then we can uh, create, uh, our command is going to be, uh, yeah, it's a dash C. Uh, the list file and then an output is going to be ai.mdv. Okay, so now what I need to do is just grab the um, grab the actual uh, and uh, copy this stuff over. Uh, here's, copy the AI, AI file over on this. So let's do that. So uh, okay, so I got to find the um, and I closed it last time. So here it is. Okay, and uh, put it in temp. There we go. Uh, close that up, and then let's exit that. Eject properly, and then all right, back to the QL. There, in DV three. Okay, so uh, let me load that in. So, uh, actually, let me reboot. It's always a good, good idea to reboot, uh, uh, get rid of anything I've already had in there. So I'm going to uh, load MDV3, translate to bass. And it's still reading it in. And here it goes. Uh, it's not that long of a program, so it should be okay. And uh, here we go. So if I run it, and enter size is 1000, and it's MDD3 words text. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go fast forward through this loading because uh, it's gonna take a while. And it finally loaded, excellent. So now if we can type some, um, uh, let's type some of the same stuff we did before. So we could say, um, hi, how are you? These were the, uh, oops, uh, top common words in German. And let's see what it gives it. Um, it's, it's a little longer search, but uh, and if it doesn't find a, a, a particular word, it's going to have to go through the whole list. So some of these things are going to be slower than others. Hi, uh, So it doesn't. Uh, well, so it didn't. Yeah. So that's actually not too bad. Uh, um, let's see. How much does it cost? How much does that uh, cost? Uh, v feel to us um, and it probably doesn't have the word oh custom it has it okay so that's yeah that actually works so let's actually open up uh, once again um, let's go back in here and uh, Google Translate and so let's try that uh, how much does that cost in German is he feel custom does he feel to does cost and yeah um i mean it, google is a little better but uh let's try something uh, longer let's put it in here first so imagine if i had a cat and a dog and this would uh, say stellen sie sie sich vor ich ich hätte eine katze und einen hund all right let's see how how uh, well uh, the QL does on this. And that, oh, I'm typing the wrong thing. Two keyboards. Imagine, imagine, imagine if I had, let's capitalize the I, I had a cat and a dog. And this is going to give us, uh, again, it's a little slow because it's a thousand things in there. So that's pretty, uh, and, I, and I didn't have, it's just, a, it's an inefficient linear search. Now I could change this to a binary search, which I might do just to show you that, I, I won't do it in this video, but I might uh, do a follow-up. Vorstellen, wenn ich hätte eine, ein Katz und ein Hund. Yeah, so let's, let's, let's reverse this. Uh, and let's say actually what the QL translate gives us. So for Stellen, then ich hatte ein Katz und ein Hund. Imagine if I had a cat and a dog. So at least it does that properly. So again, obviously, uh, uh, QL Translate uh, is a little simpler than Google Translate. But I mean, considering this is a 1983 computer, um, I'm not unimpressed by that. And it's a very simple algorithm. Um, you know, what this kind of shows you is where, oops, wrong keyboard. Where, where do you, uh, you live? Uh, and this is Wo Tun Sie Leben. That's kind of a little clunky. I'm not sure this is where do you live. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, English, uh, German to uh, English. Uh, I'm sorry, English to German. Wo wohnst du? Is, is something that you would say in German. Wo, so, so the so obviously Google uh, QL Translate does not sort of uh, uh, flip this around, but uh, at the same time, can uh, can a, a German understand you if you said "Wo tun Sie leben?" Uh, you'd say, "Oh yeah, well, uh, you're trying to say where do you live?" So uh, that's not too bad. What should I do? Is another one I wanted to try. What? Oh, wrong keyboard again. Sorry, I keep I keep doing that. <laughs> what? Should I do? Let's capitalize the I. Uh, was sollte ich tun? Uh, yeah, that's a good one. I like that one. Uh, 
what should I do? What should I do? And uh, was soll ich machen? Uh, no, I actually like what was sollte ich tun better than that. So, um, yeah, no, I, I, I actually like the QL version better. So interesting that, and again, if I go German to English and say, uh, was uh, soll ich ich tun, uh, what should I do? It does give you that. So yeah, um, I, um, uh, I, I like that. Uh, so chalk one out for the QL. Again, uh, I, I've never played with uh, translation. I, I haven't, uh, I do more uh, audio to text uh, in speech. So I don't do this uh, language translation. I never really thought about the complexity of it, but it seems like in many occasions, simple uh, word substitutions work. Obviously, sometimes you want to have a higher uh, level. So, I, I, you know, the, the, uh, the, imagine if I had a cat and a dog, uh, Google did it much better than that. But uh, it just goes to show you how simple an algorithm you can uh, write. So um, just wanted to play around with some AI today on my QL. And uh, so uh, I'm thinking I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, uh, I did show you the, um, I can uh, the program. So if you um, uh, if you want the program, just uh, contact me or comment below. But uh, that's all I'm going to do today. So uh, thanks for watching me, and um, I might do uh, more AI in the future, uh, some of the other programs. But I really thought this would be kind of cool to sort of show a 1983 computer uh, going up against uh, you know the almighty Google uh, to do this, and uh, I thought the QL handled itself pretty well. So. Um, uh, language translation uh, is, is, is a part of uh, um, language, which is a part of AI. So thanks for watching and stay safe.